Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know how we do it here on Between the Lines. We're always with gratitude or like I prefer to say, thankfulness. And I'm thankful to be here. It's a beautiful day. It's a bit overcast here in Trinidad and Tobago. We had a lot of rain a while ago, but that's good because the mangoes are out. I know a lot of people don't know outside of probably the Caribbean, I don't know about natural mangoes, but it's getting wet, some nice rain fell on it. And so I'm expecting the sun to shine. And so I'll be getting my mangoes in a few weeks. Okay, don't be jealous, don't be hating. I have a lovely man here with me, Dr. Mark Ryle. And I'm going to tell you a bit about what we're talking about, very different topic age decoded and the future of humanity age decoded and the future of humanity i mean this sounds like a heavy topic i'm going to try to make it light and you know comical i guess in some places if it needs to be try not to make things too heavy on between the lines and let me tell you a bit about mark let me get his bio here so mark recently retired from teaching economics at hillfield i don't know how to pronounce that i'm going to try it Strat Hallen College in Hammond. Good. I yeah. think I did a yeah. good job. His coaching specialty was cross country running. My word, that's serious stuff there. Age Decoded is Mark's first novel. It wouldn't be his last, I'm sure. He, re he wrote it to educate the world about CRISPR. I don't know what that is. Genetic engineering technology. You see, I'm learning some big words and having to pronounce things here today, people. Mark represented Canada in the 2019 World Age Group Triathlon Championships. His education is a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD, a doctorate in education. And he's here to talk about, like we said, age decoded and the future of humanity. That is quite serious here, uh, Mark. Welcome to Between the Lines. Thank you so much, Corrine, for having me here. It's it's a it's a humbling uh, uh, event and for me, and uh, it's quite a pleasure. It's great to have you. And like I was saying off here, I love your hairstyle. And you were telling me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think well, you're, trying I... Give, you're trying to give me competition. It's Is a lot it? longer than normal right now because up here in Canada, we're still not allowed to get haircuts. So uh, yeah, it used to be quite short. Uh, my my dear wife Lynn did cut it um, at her house. Uh, she tried about six months ago, and she did a pretty good job until she got to my right ear and almost chopped it off. So we said, "No more of that. Let's just let it grow." I said, "Go again." I said, "Go again." <laughs> and I said, "Give it a try. Don't just cut her off like that." I mean. She said she just made a mistake. Uh, give her a go again and, and see she does it to the left air. You know, we we don't know. We got to even things off, balance things off. Okay. We're, we're talking humanity here. We're balancing things off. <laughs> hey, hopefully she doesn't listen to this show and get your tip. <laughs> I was just about to say I need to have her on interview. <laughs> so Mark, explain to me what does age decoded mean? Let's start there before we connect it to the future sure. of humanity. Let's sure. start. So that's the title of my novel, Age Decoded, with a hyphen in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's sort of a play on words. It's a play on two terms. It's um, a future society where aging, the capacity of humans normally age and grow old and then die, is decoded and, and therefore um, stopped. So people are... Um, able to become immortal with this new technology. But the other thing is, um, it's a play on um, the decoding in that happens with uh, what you mentioned, this CRISPR technology for um, coding and uncoding genes. It's a, it's a new method, CRISPR. I won't tell people what it stands for. It's quite a polysyllabic uh, uh, acronym, but um, it's basically a tool that you can go, that scientists can use to go in and uh, change or edit and even replace or take out parts of people's dna yeah what 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 what, what, what? wait taking it out let me let me get back in here because you need to really see my reaction taking <laughs> taking 
out somebody's DNA. Yeah. While when or, they're dead. While they're no, alive. when they're when they're and, alive. So, and I'm not trying to be. I, I don't want to be negative. I mean, my novel has some uh, dystopian elements to it, um, but. Uh, on the positive side, this is a wonderful breakthrough technology. Uh, Jennifer Dudna from UCLA Berkeley just got the Nobel Prize a year and a half ago in chemistry, uh, along with Emmanuel Chapretien from Europe. The, the two, those two mm -hmm. female researchers, scientists, um, have have created something or perfected something um, that is going to be amazing. They can use this, for example, to um, uh, edit genes uh, and remove or at least potentially tackle diseases sickle cell anemia is one that's probably going to be tackled which is especially good for the black population um but also diseases such as huntington's uh mm -hmm. and alzheimer's and all, hiv uh, being able to change people's dna can be a very 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 positive uh, thing it's going to be a breakthrough yeah i i miss that a bit because we were just offline for me on my side but i want you to keep talking no matter what because i'm sure you will still be online it's always live so keep talking even if you don't see me or you don't see sure, us. no problem but so but yeah. can you repeat that for me if you don't mind mm -hmm. yeah so i'm just saying that crispr this technology will have many many positive um uh, effects it's going to be a tsunami in science it's a breakthrough wow. be able to potentially tackle things such as sickle cell anemia <clears throat> which is huge in the black population, wow. as you probably. Know. Uh, but yes. also yes. Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, um, cystic fibrosis, you name it, anything that's genetically based, they have a potential to solve that. It might take 20 years, 40 years, 60 years, but there, there's a lot of research going on this right now. So there's a lot, so it's a very positive out, thing. So when, when, so you take out the DNA, you take out a part, how do you do that? I'm, I'm trying yeah. to understand my mind around this thing how do you do that um and is that the only way that that sounds very intrusive <laughs> it is you've got to get in there and um we have something like 30 or 40 thousand genes and those genes are even more complicated the dna is uh, quite a long uh, strand embedded in all of our cells and uh the the dna itself has something like three billion uh pairs of uh, nucleotides and the nucleotides uh, themselves can be arranged in four different patterns. So by you're going to go in there and you're going to edit, I could give you an example with cystic fibrosis. It's mm -hmm. one pair of nucleotides that are just flipped in the wrong position. So if they can flip them back uh, from C to G instead of G to C, that one little edit can potentially um, remove that horrible uh, human affliction of cystic fibrosis. I am listening to you and you saying edit and I am a publisher, I'm an author, I write and I am thinking you're talking about me like a book, like a manuscript. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying that I, or, or, or like we use, like when we use Microsoft Word and our computer yeah. and you can go in and edit, delete, uh, make yeah. changes. You're making my body, me, yeah. my being, sound like Microsoft Word. Yeah. You're simplifying the me. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, there is a good analogy that Walter Walter Isaacson just published a best-selling book called The Code Breaker. And in there, he uses the analogy where uh, your genome, you're a human, you have a genome, uh, is, the, is the book. Uh, there's something called the epigenome, which is the reader of the book, but that's a little more complicated. I'll leave that. But within the book, you have pages, which are like the genes. Mm -hmm. And then within pages, you have words, which are like your DNA code, all of all of the DNA, all these nucleotides I was talking about. So that's a good way of looking at it, actually. And you can edit those uh, those words in those pages in that book. What kind of people does it take to do this editing? It takes because some very... I edit words, <laughs> but I cannot but edit I'll... genes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, right now it takes very sophisticated scientists, although that could change. I have read about people already trying to ingest substances that are loaded with genes that they think will permeate their genetic code. Uh, I don't know about that right now. It's, right now it's sophisticated scientists, but I, literally they are saying in five or 10 years, 
those scientists will be able to start doing things to um, to either adults or even to fertilize uh, eggs and embryos and sperm cells too. So this is this is this is a bit too much for me. It's too <laughs> much. <laughs> this is too much. I I I did say I'm going to try and simplify it and make it lighthearted, people. I'm doing my best. Um, this, this seems like you're playing with God's work. You're playing. You, you, you're playing. What are you yeah, doing? Um, you're just playing with things. Yeah, I try to be positive. Although, like I say, if you read my novel, Age Dakota, it has dystopian elements uh okay the ending isn't so bad but there's a lot of nasty possibilities in there i'm not questioning that but playing with god or playing as god playing uh that that's possible if you think of human history we have done not a bad job of if you look at nature and nurture on the on the nurture side we've done a pretty good job with uh, medicine and diet and exercise and social services for people and helping each other and just progressing as a as a species not bad we have our we have our faults let's face it but we've progressed but that's all been nature we're not changing the nature sorry that's all nurture now with this step we're going to change the very nature of humans we're, we're going to get inside mm -hmm. their edit their genes and change the genetic code, which that's a, that's a that's crossing a, a huge boundary in history. That yes, is yes, and that scares me. You're editing me. You no, <laughs> and then and then and then how do you go back? How okay? So you move well, GT and you fix us. Yeah, back. actually, and, I was and, just... and how do you make me back whole? I mean, no, actually, the trial. I was just reading about something called CRISPR on and CRISPR off. So if you think of uh, editing, when you edit a book, you can always go back and re-edit and change or, or re you know, that undo thing. That's yeah. pretty handy. Yes, undo, undo. Well, yes. they just announced uh, there's a group called the Whitehead Institute near the Mass near MIT near in Boston, and it's a group of about 20 scientists, and they just announced uh, a CRISPR on, CRISPR off, off mechanism. So they rather than editing. They just turn the thing on or off so you can see it or not, so it works or not, and they can reverse that procedures. That's that's another thing that these things are happening week by week. I'm reading about these things, and it's it's it's, it's a tsunami. It really is. So, I, I I am saying to myself, don't they have anything else to do? I mean, <laughs> you just <laughs> you just you're just sitting there, you know, thinking how can I how can I edit a human being? Yes, we're doing it for humanity, for the benefit, you know, to make it a better world, longevity of life, better life. But when you start interfering with nature, things can go wrong. And as much as you want to undo, because I have undone an MS Word document and sometimes I didn't save it. And, yeah. <laughs> and you yeah, know what happens when you don't save. Karine, I put my glasses on because I'd like to read you something about related to what you just said. Okay. I hope so, it's something positive. Please make it. it comical well, and it's um, C.S. Lewis. You know the writer C.S. Lewis. Yes. yes. Okay, so he he foresaw this um, forty years ago in a book called The Abolition of Man. Uh, C.S. Lewis, who's a Christian writer, said, and I'm going to just quote: "If any one age really attains by eugenics and scientific education." the power to make its descendants what it pleases, then all men who live after it are patients of that power. Man's power over nature and therefore over other men. Now we could replace men with human, right? But I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I, I am not liking this, Dr. Ryle. I think, <laughs> you should just, I think you should just stay in Canada, try and get to here, but get your hair cut enjoy the barber you know that kind of thing and just leave these things yeah. alone well <laughs> it's 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 imminent it's going to happen so my my i'm not trying to sell books what i'm trying to do is educate people because especially people a little bit younger than me uh say uh, if uh well you know older people could read it out of interest but it's going to impact people maybe their children or their grandchildren more and so yeah. i, I really think we need to know about this and that everybody learn about it <clears throat> because there are pot potential drawbacks and people like yourself it sounds like have philosophical um, 
opposition to this. Like there are other drawbacks such as uh, bioterrorism, for example, uh, being able to genetically, I mean, think of what happened just with this virus, this COVID virus. It wouldn't take much, well, I don't want to give anybody ideas, but I'm not going there, but. No, but it came, to me. it came to me because I'm thinking there are people now hacking. I mean, there are people who just sit down with the challenge and the thirst of doing the opposite of good. That's what they sit down and do. So if even if people are doing this whole genetic thing, age decoding and, and editing and whatever, there are people who will come about and say, oh, let me see if I can do something to destroy that. Or yeah. they, they're, they're just, ah. And Every I'm like, technology. Don't you yes, don't you have anything better to do? Yeah. Don't Every major, <laughs> Every, uh, sorry, Karina. Every major technology, if you think of, say, uh, nuclear technology, we've had, it's a double-edged sword. And, and um, you, we, we have a responsibility to learn about it, control it, and, 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 and uh, be very careful with it. Um, I'm just going back to the CRISPR thing, though. Um, I don't know if you have uh, malaria in your area. Um, we did. We did some years ago. I wasn't around, I think, at that time, thankfully. Oh, but in, um, in Africa, it's, it's huge, right? Yeah, um, I think so. But in warm countries, it's really warm countries, malaria. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, that's one area right now. Uh, they're researching an Imperial College in L London, England, and also in um, UC uh, Irvine in California. They are researching changing mosquitoes and what's called what a gene drive. So they change the mosquito so it can't carry malaria. Then they take those mosquitoes and release them with a gene drive into the mosquito population. And they think they can wipe out malaria. That's not editing us. That's editing another species that should help us. Looky, looky, stop <laughs> interfering. <laughs> I don't care if it's human, insect, rat, stop interfering because these things <laughs> You put you put things together, you interfere with natural order of things, something yes. goes wrong. Something goes wrong. Just leave it be. That is just my thing. So you know Very I'm up. going to be I'm going to be at the forefront against this thing. I know about you know trying to improve humanity. You know what I believe about humanity since we're talking the future of humanity? I believe the future of humanity should be more focused on love, compassion, evolving and being a better version of ourselves, yes. doing what it takes to be more Christ-centered, more along that line, whether you're a believer or not, servant leadership, being happy, having more joy and bliss in your life, because that in itself is going to make your cells happy at the genetic level. And once your cells are happy, your body is going to be fine. That's what Very I well believe. I well think said. once you once you have toxic thoughts, toxic people, toxic environment, toxic behavior, toxic attitude, your cells are going to be toxic. Yeah, and so it's going, it's going to, it, it, it's because it's not meant to be that way. It is going to start attacking the body diseases and all sorts of things come about exercise eat well drink a lot of water have joyous people around you that's what i would do and i am not interfering with nobody genes to do that mark i am not <laughs> okay the, yeah, only no, I, 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 the only genes i'm interfering with is in the store okay when i go and buy a pair of jeans and put it on okay? yeah i i think i'm a hundred percent well I, i'm i'm hearing what you're saying and I, i'm I'm sort of leaning in that direction, although I, I'm trying not to be too pessimistic about this, given that it's going to happen anyway. So I want people to learn about it. But can I, on your point about being human and just embracing being a good human, uh, I'm going to read a quote from one of my characters in the in the novel, if I could. His name is Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus Sengbiller, and he's actually a Buddhist. Now, I understand you have Christians and Buddhists in your in your country, so yeah. he's sort of a combination of the two, and he's mm -hmm. very, very thoughtful. He's an older man, and in my novel, they stop aging. They use genetic engineering to stop you from aging, so he's 78 years old, but he's not getting a day older, so he's He's, he's not in great condition, um, but he's a very strong thinker. Uh, so, and he, and, and he says here uh, to another character, he says, 
uh, this is Jesus speaking, the thief to be most wary of is the one who steals your time. That's what most people think. But with age decoding, with stopping aging, I believe it's the opposite. I think the thief to be wary of one is the one who lends you too much time. They steal mm -hmm. your humanity. They steal your humanity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you have time to be distracted by a number of other things. Because once you have a lot of time on your hands, you know, you get in involved my, in another thing. In my novel, they they discover, they stop aging. In fact, they learn to reverse it. And there's a lot of, <laughs> you're not going to like to hear this, Kareem, but there's research going on on reversing aging right now. So in my mm -hmm. novel, Every, almost everybody goes for it. It's publicly available. It's cheap. You go in for a half an hour appointment. It doesn't cost anything because they don't want it to be just for rich people. So anybody can get it. And uh, most people go for it. I mean, if we asked your viewers, would you at least want to stop getting any older? Probably a lot of them would go for it. I don't want to do that. I don't <laughs> want to do that. No. The, uh. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I like the natural order of things. We are supposed right. to age. Okay, we go through youth, all the babiness, smooth and nice and smelling nice, to aging, smelling funky and all of that. We need to go through that. Okay, yeah. I, I love, let me tell you, I love when I look at an older person's face, yes. that I see the wrinkles, the lines, the sinks, the, the you know, I, I, the hair, how it falls on their face, their neck. Everything to me tells a story. And if you, if you keep preventing that, I'm not, you know, I'm to appreciate the journey that somebody has gone through to live that life. I wouldn't be able to see that and appreciate that. I think youthfulness has nothing to do with the outside. It has to do with the inside. Right. Because you can't, an age is just a number. You, how you look, this is, this, this is, this has to go. This has to go. But your youthfulness comes from within. Nobody <coughs> could tell how old you are based on your inside yes and the and that's, joyous life you live yeah that's so well said and, and what i'm trying to do with my novel is there are a lot of books out on this right now genetic engineering but most of them are non-fiction written by scientists in my novel i want people to feel and imagine some of these effects and uh if, if you don't mind i'm going to read one more character she's a 25 year old she's locked into 25 she's chosen not to get any older i um, agree with that I am locked into 25. I, I will be 25 on August 27, just to let you know. Again, I have been 25 for the past, well, I don't know. I lost count, but yeah, I'm 25. And nobody this could character. tell me otherwise. <laughs> well, no, well, this character is 25. She's been 25 for about 200 years in my novel. And <laughs> she lost her father. Her father, un uh, unfortunately, left her. Uh, mm -hmm. Her mother is the lead character in my novel who invented the uh, this technology but was very nervous about the ethical implications. So the government took her, captured her, and faked her suicides uh, and took her underground. So this, this scientist who was worried about these ethical humanity issues was captured. Anyway, that's her mother. So she's lost her mother who she thinks killed herself. She's lost her father who's left her. And, and she's um, psychologically trying to deal with all of this and she says i'm going to quote that her name is zymana zymana says has this condition where she sort of chews away on her hand because that's her sort of compensation mechanism she gnaws away at her wrist in her hand so she says here i sit gnawing pathetically a sliver of one generation isolated infertile unable to relate or reach out i'm stuck in one egotistical dimension alone what is what is it like to nurture a baby to bring up a child to see a walk and talk for the very first time. What's it like to listen to a son or daughter tell you stories about school and their friendships and to grow old, witnessing them mature into adults, into companions and caregivers? What's it like to fully experience the cycle of life with loved ones? I'll never know the joy of being a real mother like women were in the old days. I am telling you, that is well said. I, I want to experience aging. I want to see what I look like. I want to know what I would be feeling like. I mean, I'm already starting to feel some of the little things, but, but yes, even though I'm 25, okay? But, but I am still living a youthful life because I still believe I'm 25. I still behave. I mean, I probably behave less than 25, but yeah, I, 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 I carry myself like that. And I believe the whole editing of your genes, you can do that 
through even mind work because a lot of people have done mind work meditation and have healed themselves because we can do that it is possible okay so people coming to interfere with stuff and edit and undo and the on and off i'm not playing with that mark i'm not playing with that <laughs> if it's one subject they're not getting it's me they're not getting me <laughs> and i hope you don't jump on that table and allow them to edit you because i like the way your hair looks whether yeah. you get it or not <laughs> Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, you look like one of those rock stars, you know, with, with music you can play in a band. So thank I don't you. want them to change you. I don't want them to change you at all, okay? So please tell them you're not going to be a part of it and I'm not going to be a part of it, okay? That's that's said and done. That's said and done. I want, I want to hop across to your website here now. Sure. Let's have a look at that. Uh, let me see if I can do that. You, where are you? Here we go. Are you seeing that? Yeah, so that's that website. Mm -hmm. I don't have an author website, but that's sort of a pseudo website where they, if they click on that image, I guess you'll mm -hmm. have a link. You'll have a link to that on the show. <clears throat> um, if they click on the image, read down, there's a little bit more bio on me. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, a little further down. And if they, and then scrolling back up, mm -hmm. um, there's a little description of the book. This is, um, I'm, I'm self-publishing this. So this is off of platform called Draft to Digital. They've been great with me as a self-published author. And then if you click the Get It Now button, then it'll take you to your favorite retailer. And you can try, I don't know if you're able to click that there, but Amazon or mm -hmm. Apple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the book cover. It's really nice and very um, Star trek -y. What do you call that? <laughs> futuristic, futuristic uh, with all the stars and the universe. And you see the... What, what do you call that? The gene, you know, the twisty gene thing there. Yes. Yeah, the helix. Yeah, the DNA. The helix. Yeah. I love that. I find that so interesting. So I could interesting. Put in a compliment to my cover designer. She's here in Hamilton, Ontario. Her name is Tanise Goddard. And she just, she was wonderful helping me design this. Yeah. I said, don't we need a picture of a, a scientist on here? I said, no. No. You know, that no. mystery you need the mystery and that's that's exactly it because i agree with that approach you know and i i'm seeing a subtle copy which is which is there underneath a shadow of the of the yep. title so yep. that is that is also communicating something to me it's it's nice but the future of humanity i mean let's 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 push ourselves we're in what what year is this again 2021 10 years into the future Dr. Ryle, what are you seeing? Well, 10 years in the future, they are going to start using this. Actually, they've already started doing it for mm -hmm. sickle cell. I think there was a patient uh, about a year and a half ago in the United States who got her sickle cell solved. They took her blood out of her, not all at once, obviously, but they replaced <laughs> her blood slowly with genetically altered blood that solved that disease. Apparently, she's healthy. So that's mm -hmm. fantastic. So, But it's going to be happening more and more. You can, you're even going to be uh, get your own genome uh, you know, analyze for right now, it's still fairly expensive, but I think it'll be about a hundred bucks in, in 10 years. And a lot of people are going to do it. And then they're, but they're going to be applying this to more and more disease or conditions. Uh, it's going to start happening pretty quickly. My book starts in the year 2055 when they use wow. genetic engineering to stop aging that, that I think is going to take a longer time. So it's out there a bit. Wow. You know, this is something like you can just, there'll be stores around and you can walk in and say, I want that body. I want those pair of eyes. Can I buy that? You know, <laughs> it just, it just sounds like that. that yeah. And that's the genetic screening. So what they will do, they could sort of test a, uh, uh, an embryo. So it's already been conceived tech, make sure that it doesn't have maybe the Huntington's disease or something, or make sure it's got, you know, it's uh, in the movie Galacta, uh, yes, I th I they do that. They actually, that. Yeah. they actually do that. They, in fact, they, they, the couple produces several em embryos, and they're allowed to choose which one they like the best. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Mark, you had to go there. You had to go there. Stop playing with God's work. Leave it alone. Oh, oh. my word. I, well, look, I'm sort of with you. My book is a critical review of this. Uh, it's an education for people. It's certainly not saying, oh, we got to do this willy-nilly and 
but it's also a recognition that it's going to happen. Happen, sorry, it's definitely yeah. going to happen. Well, we do know that for a fact, people are going to do things whether we like it or not. We just, like you say, you are here to educate, and the, I, I respect you for that. Providing as much of the information as possible, the pros, the cons, the in betweens, the all how, so that we know what what is coming. I think people who will be listening to this and including myself will be saying, hopefully I'm not around at that time. Even though you say 10 years, I will be around by the grace of God in 10 years. But I was hoping that you would say probably a hundred years from now <laughs> when, I may not, when I may not be alive, okay? I don't mind it happening probably in that time, but then, okay, my children will still be around probably. But I don't want any of my generations around, I don't know. <laughs> But, you know, to, to, to benefit, I don't know if that's a, a good word, you know, to have, or, or for that to have impact. You know, I really, I really don't like this, but I'm glad that you are educating us on the reality, what's coming, so that we can make a choice how we want to live. It comes just like this COVID vaccine. They're making it seem like... It's mandatory, but I am like, hello, it's my body. I'm deciding if I want to take the vaccine or not. I don't have to. And they might say, well, Corinne, you cannot travel anywhere in the world. You cannot leave your island. I know they're putting me in a position where I'm forced to. Or I can decide, well, this is it. I've traveled enough. I don't need to go anywhere else. There is virtual. I can, I can continue doing my stuff virtually. But I know I will have the itch to take my passport and jump on a plane and they might want to stop me. They might allow me out of my island, but when I travel to the other place, they might say, well, you need to go back home because you are not immunized. And then, then what? So I don't I know. You, if, you, if you can't travel, I just got my AstraZeneca vaccine. Uh, I, I, I would like to hop on a plane as soon as possible and go down and visit you. Cause I, I'd love to go visit you, you and the island there and uh, the islands. And uh, that'd be fantastic. So if you I'm can't happy. travel, I'm uh, you come across, you come across, but I would want to visit you. I would <laughs> want to visit you. And then I'll have to have a beat down in the airport. You understand? Yeah. A beat down. And I, I don't want to be doing that. I, I want to come quietly. You understand? Yeah, well, this virus has definitely raised awareness of the importance of microbiology and uh, how wonderful thing. It's not even, apparently it's not even alive. I don't know how it can't be alive, but it's a virus and it, um, can have a huge impact on the world just one little thing like that so it's amazing how it's mutating you know it, it it's it's i don't know how it's doing that why it's doing that who is behind it is somebody behind i really don't know but as I, it comes back to what i was saying take care of you it's back to basics back to basics mark you know take care of yourself eat well be joyous do the, the the proper things and these things will not really come to you and if it is well so be it you just deal with it you know you just deal with it but this is good the future of humanity age decoded i mean this sounds this sounds like a movie mark honestly this song Maybe. is like a movie i will word out you never know I, I wanted to put the word humanity in the subtitle i think that's what we're talking about here yeah that's yeah. the bottom line humans yeah. human nature humanity yeah, humanity, human nature. I don't like the interfering mark. Honestly, I don't like it. Stop fiddling with things you're not supposed to be interfering with. But like you said, it's imminent. People are going to do what they're going to do. We can't stop them, but we we have a choice. That's a good thing with, with life and with humanity and humankind. We have a choice. Yeah. Any final words from you? Give us some hope, Mark. Let's not end on a sad note. Give us some hope, Mark. Give us I think something. Th generally with technology, we've done pretty well. I go back to the nuclear one, okay? I know there are some issues, uh, mm -hmm. like not all the countries have signed the non-proliferation treaty. Not all the countries signed the one that just came out a couple months ago, which is um, the uh, prohibition of nuclear weapons. Only 51 countries signed that, and none of them have nuclear weapons. The nine that have nuclear weapons didn't sign it. But we've done... <laughs> We've done pretty well. We haven't, you know, we, I know we've used the weapon a couple of times, but we've, uh, it's sort of settled down on that front. Um, so I'm hopeful that with this other technology, this genetic engineering, we can, we can, uh, uh, maybe I can put a plug in for one um, author up here. She's a scientist from Dalhousie University. Her name's uh, Fr uh, Francois Belis. 
she just published a book called um, uh, Altered Inheritance, which is Harvard University Press. And Francois Berlis uh, says right in there, uh, she's in the, she's a scientist in genetics. She said, we need to get everybody involved, not just politicians, not just scientists. We need everyone like yourself, Preen, other and all others to, to have their input here because this is a breakthrough in let's get everybody involved. That's her message. And, and, and of course it's impacting everybody. You can't just have the scientists alone deciding what they want to do with us. <laughs> like, like we are little lab rats. Oh no, that's, that is not happening. That is not happening. So please put me on to the doctor there, you know, so that I can clearly have my input. Okay. <laughs> okay I'll send you her, her link and maybe you want to pick up her book. It's, yeah. Yeah. That would be up. cool. But Dr. Mark Ryle, it's been a pleasure. I, I hope that listeners and watchers don't take all of this too heavy stuff and that we put it across pretty light and it's really to educate you. So don't feel, oh my God, I need to worry about this right now. No, it's just something, um, a, a topic of concern, but don't take it on amidst everything else that you have and then get depression and anxiety and all okay. those things. You don't want that. But I think you should just think about your life and the contribution you're making to life right now and the legacy that you want to leave. And just, just think about that. Yeah, moving forward for your kids, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Dr. Mark Ryle, thank you so much. Your first book, congratulations. I didn't congratulate you. I wish you all the best. Whatever that you hope to achieve by putting out this book, I hope you achieve it and more. Yes, and that I'm right behind you against all the interference. So <laughs> thank you so much for being on Between the Lines. Thank you, Karina. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. So bye.